Hi everyone, welcome to Guitar Lessons Live and our beginner course one, lesson one. Now in this first beginner course, the goal is to get you playing as fast as possible and getting you to start making music because that's really what it's all about. You ready? Let's play. Now before we can get playing, there's just a few quick terminology things that I want to clear up so that we are all on the same page. They're going to be in standard tuning. Now what this means is that we've got the guitar tuned to E, A, D, G, E, and E. If you guys need to tune, then feel free to download a free tuning app and tune up to standard, which will usually be the default setting on there. The second thing is we want to talk about naming the strings of the guitar. So we've got six strings on the guitar which means that we're going to use six numbers, one for each other string. The numbers we're going to use are one through six, but we're going to start in the reverse order, meaning that the thickest string, this low E string, we're going to call the sixth string and then work our way down the guitar. So this would be the sixth string, then this would be the fifth string, fourth string, third string, second string and first string. Now I know this might seem a little bit counterintuitive to you and I know that for sure it was counterintuitive to me when I first started out because I always wanted to call this thickest string the one string because it was closest to me. However, it is very important that we call this the sixth string. Now once we know how to name the strings of the guitar, there's only one other real thing that we need to know how to name and that is the frets of the guitar. Frets are these little pieces of metal that you see going up and down the neck. And again, for those we are going to use numbers for naming. Although this time it's a lot more intuitive because we're going to start at the end of the guitar with the first fret and then work our way down, increasing in numbers. For example, if we go on the sixth string, this would be fret one, fret two, fret three, and so on going down the neck. It's almost like you are reading it from left to right like you would do a book. Cool. One final thing to note is that when we want to play an open string, we wouldn't generally refer to it as the zero fret or the no fret, we would just call it open. For example, if I need to play an open G, that means that I would be playing the open third string without fretting anything. For those of you joining on electric guitar or on a semi-electric guitar like this one, you'll also have some extra controls to consider. What these are is they'll generally be a volume control for each of the pickups, a tone control for each of the pickups and a position selector, meaning that we select which pickup we want to play through. What the pickups do is they literally pick up the sound and then transfer it electronically to your amplifier, which then amplifies the sound out. So for example, you can see currently I'm on the uh, neck position of this guitar with the switch up, meaning that it will only use this pickup when we play. If I were to switch to the middle position, it will use both pickups. And if I lower the switch, it will be just the bridge pickup. Now, as far as the tone control settings go, I'll make a separate video on that just because it gets a little bit more technical than what we need to know uh, for our first beginner lesson. Just for reference, I will be using my tone on eight and I'll be using the neck pickup for this entire video and pretty much the entirety of beginner one. With the terminology under our belt, let's learn some chords. In today's lesson, we will be looking at the C major chord the A major chord, the G major chord, the E major chord, and finally the D major chord. So you'll notice that they are all major chords and this is going to be the first colour that we are going to be introduced to. So let's get started by looking at the C chord and go to a close-up. Right, so here we are with the close-up for the C major chord. And as you can see, I've also included the chord diagram in the corner here to help us out. The first thing you'll notice about this chord is that we're actually only going to be playing five of the six strings. And so if you look at the chord diagram, the little X there above the sixth string, that means that we're not going to be playing this low E string. We're actually going to be either muting it or we're just going to be avoiding playing it entirely. Then you're going to take your ring finger, your third finger, and you're going to put it on the fifth string third fret right there. And that is the note C. An important aspect as we go through these is that we're going to be learning both the shapes as well as the names of the notes we are playing. And this is something that's really important and becomes even more important as we go through the beginner and the intermediate and getting all the way into the pro stage is that you really want to know both the names of the notes you're playing as well as the shapes. Because when it comes to doing seventh chords and extensions and all the wonderful stuff that we'll get into in the intermediate and advanced courses, it really does help if you start learning the names of the notes now so that you don't then have to catch up later on. So we've got C, then we're going to take our middle finger and put it on the fourth string second fret, right there. 
and that is the note E. So, so far we have C, E. Then we're going to be playing the third string open, and this is the G string, so therefore the note we're playing is G. And also you can see in the diagram, whenever we have an open string, there's a little circular O above that particular string. So we have C, E, G. Then on the second string, we're going to be playing the first fret, which this is the note C again. So you'll notice that we now have two C's. We have this low C, and we have this C, which is called an octave higher than this bass C. So we have low C, nice and low. And then we have this C, which is the high C. So low C, high C, low C, high C. Finally, we're going to be playing the first string open. And again, this is just the note E. So very similarly, we have this note, which is an E, low E, and then we have this high E, which is really getting up there in pitch. So all together, we're going to be fretting our C major chord. And now as you're playing this, before you play the full chord, it's always good to pick out the individual notes so that everything is ringing and you're not accidentally muting something. We would do... I hear all five notes ringing individually and then we can strum the chord. If you're not getting that, if you're getting something like this and you're not hearing that high string, it's because you have to make sure that you're fretting with the tips of your fingers. So we want to be fretting right there and curling our fingers so that we get all the strings to ring. So all together we have our C major chord. Now, the astute amongst you may have noticed that actually this low string is also called the E string, and indeed the note is also E. So the question then becomes, why don't we play this low E? And the answer is, well, you could, but then you'll notice that the chord sort of begins to sound quite muddy, especially in this lower register of the guitar. And so generally speaking, we want to be playing the lowest note as the bass note of the chord. So in this case, the chord is C, therefore the lowest note we play is the low C. And you can hear that that sounds very clear compared to when we also include that low E in there. While we could include the low E, for now, I would advise you not to do that and just to learn the chord while muting that lowest string. Okay, let's move on to the A chord. And now we're back with the A chord. Again, diagram here as always. And you'll notice that for this particular chord, I'm going to give you two ways of fretting it. We're going to have this first one, which is going to include using three fingers and playing this shape. But then I'm also going to show you the one that I personally like to use and the one that feels more comfortable for me, which is to use this little bar with your index finger. But the notes you'll be playing are exactly the same, and so there's no real difference between the two. It's still the same chord. Again, just like with the C chord, we're going to be muting the thickest string and again, just like with the C chord, we're going to be playing the lowest note as the root note of the chord. So in this case, we have the A major chord. And so the lowest note we're going to be playing is this open string, this open fifth string, which is the note A. Then we're going to take our index finger and we're going to put it on the fourth string second fret, which again, as you know from the C chord, this is the note E. So, so far we have open fifth string, which is an A and fourth string second fret, which is an E. Then we're going to take our middle finger and we're going to be putting it on the third string second fret. And this is again the note A. And once again, this A is just an octave higher than our open string A. And finally, we're going to take our third finger and we're going to put it on the second string second fret. And this note is the note C sharp. Now, we could also call this note D flat. And we'll talk about in the next lesson how we name notes in terms of sharps and flats. But for now, in the context of this A chord, we're going to be calling this note a C sharp rather than a D flat. So far we have fifth string open, which is an A, fourth string second fret, which is an E, third string second fret, which is an A, second string second fret, which is a C sharp. And again, we're going to be including the first string open. So all together we have before you play that, it's good to always pick out the chord just to make sure everything is ringing nicely. 
So there's your first option for the A major chord. Now let's check out the second option. The second, and personally my preferred option for playing the A major chord, is just to use your index finger as a little bar across the three strings that we want to be pressing. The notes we're playing are exactly the same. It's the same five notes with this fifth string, this low A in the bass, and then we're still playing the fourth string second fret, the third string second fret, the second string second fret, and the open first string. However, now we're going to be using our index finger and just laying it across. And if I just show you a side view, what I'm doing is I'm just letting my index finger bend like that. Although that may look a bit painful, I assure you it's not. It's absolutely fine and it's just the way that I personally play both this A chord and then as we get into the bar chords, I also like to play my bar chords with my third finger, sort of doing this little bend like that. Pick the one which is more, more comfortable for you and stick to it. Personally, I prefer to play this one. And so this is what you'll see me do throughout the videos. So those are your two options for the A major chord. And let's move on to the next chord. Next up, we have the G chord, very similar to the A chord. There are several ways that you could fret a G major chord. However, I am going to insist on us using this particular one because of the fact that it utilizes the pinky and very similar to learning the names of the notes. Learning to use your pinky very early on is something that will reap you incredible dividends six months to a year down the line, where you'll find that actually your pinky goes from being one of your weakest fingers to um, somewhat of a superstar of the guitar. So you'll see that we're going to be playing all six strings. Starting with the sixth string, we're going to be putting our middle finger on the third fret of the sixth string. And as with the other chords, this is the lowest note, and therefore you would expect this to be the root note of the chord. And indeed, this note is a low G note. Then we're going to take our first finger, and we're going to be putting it on the fifth string second fret. And this note is the note B. Then we're going to be playing the fourth string and the third string both open. So this fourth string open is the note D, and this third string open is the note G. Then we're going to take our ring finger, or our third finger, and we're going to be putting it on the second string third fret, right there. And that's again the note D. And then finally we're going to be taking our pinky and putting it on the first string third fret. And that's again the note G. So all together we have... Very important to utilize your pinky and make sure that you've got both of these top two strings ringing individually. If you've made it this far, awesome. I'm super proud of you and I'm so happy that you're keen on learning the guitar and really taking this quite seriously. For our fourth chord, we're going to learn the E major chord. For this chord, we're going to be playing all six strings, starting with the sixth string open, which is the note E. Then we're going to take our middle finger or our second finger and put it on the fifth string second fret which is the note B. Then we're going to take our third finger and put it on the fourth string second fret, which is the note E. Then we're going to take our first finger and put it on the third string first fret. Ooh, spicy. Which is the note G sharp. When we talk about sharps and flats, we can also call this an A flat. However, in this case, I'm going to be calling it a G sharp. And then we're going to play the second string open, which is the note B and the first string open, which is the note E. So all together, we're going to have... Beautiful. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted a bit of a pattern going on here, which is that for all of these major chords, whether it be C, E, G, we're really just playing three notes. Now they might be in different octaves. So if we take the G example, we might have this low G, and then this high G, or even the open G string. But at the end of the day, it's just the note G. And this is sort of our first mini guitar revelation, if you like, which is that a lot of these chords that I'm teaching you are called triads because they only consist of three notes. We can have major triads, which is what we're looking at today, and we can also have minor triads, which we'll look at in the next lesson. In the minor triads, we'll also have just three notes repeating themselves. So don't worry, it's not a coincidence. It's totally normal and it's something that you should remember because it's a very important revelation about the guitar. And what you can do with this knowledge is that, let's just take for example our E major chord. 
Once you know that this E major chord really only consists of E, B, and then G sharp, what you can do is you no longer are stuck to just one position or one shape. You can take it anywhere or across the fretboard. And this is also why I'm teaching you the names of the notes. And as we go on, I'm going to be teaching you a lot of note names so that you start learning them over time and remembering them. It's because now let's say I wanted to play the same E major chord somewhere else on the guitar. I can look at my guitar and I can say, mm, okay, well, I've got a note E here. Then what else do I need? Oh, I need a G sharp, Well, there's a G sharp right nearby and then all I'm missing is a B and well where is the nearest B? Well it's probably this one right here and so if I then take this shape you'll notice that the color that we are getting of the sound is exactly the same as the E major we have here. Now isn't that cool? that I can get the same color just by playing the three notes somewhere else on the guitar. Personally, I think that's awesome. Congratulations, you've made it to the last chord. Now the last chord we're going to be look at is the D major chord. And unlike the previous chords, actually we're going to be muting the top two strings on this one. So we're not going to be playing the sixth string. We're not going to be playing the fifth string. We're going to be playing the fourth string open, which again, if you remember our pattern, we like to have our root note of the chord in the bass. Therefore, the fourth string open is the note D. D. Then we're gonna take our first finger and put it on the third string second fret. And again, we've met this one before. This is the note A. Then we're going to take our ring finger and put it on the second string third fret. And again, this is just the note D, but an octave higher than our bass D. And finally, we're gonna take our second finger and put it on the first string second fret. And this is the note F sharp. We could call it a G flat, but in the context of a D major chord, we will be calling this F sharp. And the reason for this we'll get to a little bit later on when we start looking at the major scale and some more advanced ideas. So let's play the D major chord. And again, I'm making sure that all the notes are ringing individually before I play. I don't really want to be hearing these bass notes. Although we technically could play the at least this fifth string because this is again the note A. We don't want to be doing that because we like to have our D in the bass. And there we are, those are our major chords. Now to finish off our first lesson, we're just going to go over two exercises for you to practice. The first exercise is just going to be laying down the chords in time, in the order that we learned them. So it's going to be C major, a major, G major, E major, and finally B major. And then we're going to go back as well. Now, as you can hear, I've set up a metronome at 50 beats per minute, which is nice and slow, and it's where you want to start out and then bring it up to speed afterwards. So to give you a flavor of what the exercise will look like, we're going to start on C, and three, four, and C, two, three, and switch to A, 2, 3, 4, and switch, and so on. So now come and play it with me in time at 50 beats per minute. All right, and 3, 4, and C, 2, 3, 4, and A, 2, 3, 4, and G, 2, 3, 4, and B. Good stuff. If you found that a little fast, don't worry, that's okay. You can always start slower and then bring it up to speed later. The key thing that we want to do here is make sure that we are building every day and progressing from a slower tempo to a faster tempo while making sure we also play correctly. And now for the second exercise, we're just going to do a very basic version of what's called the spider exercise. 
which will just involve playing adjacent notes on the string with each of your fingers. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to start on the sixth string with our first finger in the first fret, and then second finger in the second fret, third finger in the third fret, fourth finger in the fourth fret, and then we're going to move strings to the fifth string, repeat, and so on. All the way till we get all the way down here to the finished string, and then on the way back we're going to play four, three, two, one, and so on. Okay, so to start with we're going to do 50 beats per minute, and we're going to do all down strokes. And three, four, and... Okay, nice. It's very good to do the spider exercise every day because it will develop the strength in your pinky and you'll also develop very good finger independence, which is what we want. And finally, we're going to do the same exercise, but now all with up picks rather than down picks. And so three and four and... Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll look at some minor chords. Stay tuned.